do we all remember that traumatic period of my working career where every time any of the leads in Phantom would post a photo or a video of themselves, tens of people would comment things like, why are there balls on their head? What's with the testicles on their face? Me, me, me. At the double mics. Can you tie them in a knot? Can you tie them in a bow? Can you hang it over your shoulder? Not really. Like a continent or whatever it is. Do your boobs hang low? The answer to that is no. Monique's gonna hate that. <laughs> As we're all aware by now, the people on stage in theatre productions wear microphones, often on their faces, sometimes on their cheek, sometimes on their forehead. If that is something you are unaware of, that must mean you are new here. So hi, my name is Monique. I am a all-round tech who has worked in live production for many, many years in all kinds of areas, circus, burlesque, music of all genres, management, tech directing, all kinds of things. But currently for the last two years, I have been working in live musical theatre. Some people who are on stage stage during shows pretty much never come off stage and those people are people we would put two microphones on not just one because there is limited time to fix them it's typically lead characters who have this depending on the budget of the show every lead will be double mic'd or just the people who will be on stage the most it just depends on the sound design and what the person designing it picks. I have had the chance to make a bunch of double rigs for people in productions over the last couple of years, but I wanted to show you the most recent one that I put together because I'm very proud of it. And I put together a lot of the little bits of tricks and skills that I have learned over the last couple of years into it. It's not something that I ever got shown or taught how to do. Everything about being a mic tech was like, you saw a little bit of it while you were a swing for somebody else's mic tech position, have fun. So I would like to give you some of the tips and tricks that I wish somebody had been able to give me. There's a bunch of things that are predetermined about what a microphone is going to be like before it gets to the person putting it together. These are things that are selected in the sound design. Things like what kind of microphone it's going to be, where it will be on the actor, and also what the position will be in terms of if it is a double rig, the backup and the main. Some people like a backup and a main to be together in the same position right next to each other. A lot of the phantom mics were like that and other people it is staggered. So usually the main will be lower down on the forehead than the backup. There are a lot of reasons why that might be a better option. My personal feelings about the staggered situation is that it's a great idea because if a microphone is together, what is happening to one main might also be happening to the backup with a lot of kinds of issues that you would come across. For example, if the wig lace is scratching on the microphone, if that is happening to the main and the backup's right next to it, it's probably happening to the backup, yeah? Whereas if the backup and the main are at different points, the backup will not be as affected by the same issue as the main would be. Today I'm going to run you step by step through how I put together a lead double rig microphone. Everyone does it differently. There is no, this is how you should do it. We are all just picking and choosing little bits of information and skills that we learn from other people. And that is part of why it's so cool. The first thing that I do when I get the mics for these double rigs is label them. That sounds like a really dumb thing to point out that you should label them. But once you have them taped into their position and then built into their position into the rig, the main and the backup will go into different transmitters and you need to know which cable goes to which microphone. And instead of having to try and like bundle down the line to figure out which one is which. They're labeled, you know which ones you are smacking into the right transmitters. And before anything, I will paint the microphone. While I try to leave mics as unaffected as possible, I do think it is incredibly important and the bare minimum to make sure that your microphone matches the skin tone and the hair color of the actor that it's going on to, depending on how much of those things is shown. What I did to find the right paint color for actors in this situation was I painted out of all of the paints that I had, I painted like a little strip onto the end of a cable because it shows differently on paper as it would onto the actual cable. Sometimes they dry down differently. I would paint onto the cable just a little tiny like one centimeter chunk near the connector because it's gonna get coiled up and put away as excess anyway so that part's not gonna ever be seen. And then I would go up to people and ask them, can I please put this cable on your head to check the tone that is correct for your microphone? It's a very bizarre thing to do at first but I think people are aware that you are doing it for the right 
right reasons. Usually in show makeup is the best option if you can get people when they're in show makeup because they might contour heavily around the outside of their face, they might have a wig that comes down far, those kind of things. If someone is between a couple of shades and I think they could go either way, I will let them pick. I will show them in a mirror and say, which one would you like your microphone to be? As much as the microphone looking as discreet as possible to the audience is, it is also incredibly important that the actor feels comfortable with the microphone they have. In this situation, I first stained the cable with Copic, Copic, someone please tell me how to pronounce that marker. Marker, I stained the cable with that first and I originally was just doing that and putting matte varnish over the top, literally like picture varnish, but it wasn't strong enough. So I ended up going back over it later on with another kind of paint and then going over the top of that with matte nail polish. Next, I added wire to the mic rig for stability. This microphone's position was requested to be quite close to the performer's eyebrow, so coming like quite far down the head and also off center because it looks a bit more discreet. If it's smack bang in the middle, people are looking to the center of someone's face. Whereas if it's on the side, they're not seeing it as often just because of the way that people look at others and also because the bangs of wigs might cover it up a little bit or things like that. This particular microphone is also going on someone who does a lot of on stage stage wig changes and in the process of doing the onstage wig change they would be putting their head down a lot so if you were to put your head down and then try and put a wig on sometimes the mic would come off their head and then get caught under the wig so the wire was both to offer a bit of stability for the position on their face from it changing and going side to side and also to stop it getting caught under wig lace during wig changes on stage to keep the two microphones and the bit of wire together i am wrapping them up in fishing line it is the thinnest clearest and strongest strongest thing that I could find that would keep the microphones together and not look big and bulky. If you think back to the trauma I was talking about from Phantom where everybody would comment on how the microphones looked like testicles, I wanted to avoid having big bulky microphones, especially because of how low this microphone's position was going to be. So I made sure that it could be as slender and discreet as possible. Using this line and the wire looks a lot better than Hellman, it looks a lot better than tape, and also tape ends up getting gunky and gross from makeup and sweat and you have to replace it often, which might be a good thing for some people, but in this situation I wanted something that was going to last for a longer time. To do the wire wrap, I knotted it at the top of the wire just below the capsule on the main microphone. I also used a whip finisher tool to do a particular knot doing this, but at the time of filming this I was really shit at it, so I will not be showing you what it looked like because it was garbage. There are other tutorials online. I winged it. I'm much better at it now and I hope you will be too. I added a little bit of nail polish onto the knot itself as well just to kind of keep it locked into place and then I very very tediously individually wrapped teeny tiny loops the entire way down the microphone and the wire introducing the backup when we got to the backup. I could have wired the backup tight close to the other cable but I wanted it to be on an angle because a I thought that it would be better for the microphone than trying to bend the cable or funny and I also just thought that it would be another great addition to try and keep things out of the microphone so having it on that angle would stop sweat from getting into it. At the end of the wire and double microphone combination, I ended up putting a bit of tape and a bit of nail polish and then a bit of Hellman on top of that to really secure it all together. This Hellman, I picked the beige color so that I could then specify more accurately the color based on the performer. If you've never used a Hellman tool before, it is very frustrating and it's also kind of dangerous. The first time that I use when I cut up my fingers a lot trying to use the tool, so be careful. You are given a bit of Hellman lubricant to go with the Hellman tool. Using a little bit of that, if you use a wig pin, if you don't get a little dunky thing with it, if you use a wig pin and you chop the end off, you can use that to dip into the lubricant and then dip into the Hellman and then it is easier to shimmy the Hellman onto the tool. I usually give it a bit of a stretch so that it goes over better and then you very, very, very gently shimmy it over the mic. Getting it off is actually the hard part, I find. I usually use a tissue to pull it off because it is lubed up so it's slippery and you can't get it off. And then it is done. I did a big old coat of the Copic marker that we originally stained the cable with over those little clear bits of the fly line and then covered the whole thing in matte nail polish. 
After I finished filming the creation of this microphone, I actually added two different things to the microphone for its functionality. One was a Hellerman ring around the main capsule, kind of halfway down the capsule to break sweat. If you put that ring of Hellerman around, especially if you leave the edge of it sharp and then just paint the ring of Hellerman to match the microphone, it will break the sweat as it's going down the cable without letting it have a chance to get up into the grill. The other thing I added was about 10 centimeters of Hellerman around around the cable from the point that we ended it further down. This was because the performer that this was for had their hair in a protective style that meant that there wasn't a lot of hair to grip into in their wig prep from like here to here. So it meant that the microphone stability in its position was kind of compromised because we couldn't stick it into the front of their head to keep it in position. Instead of relying on pinning it into their hair, having the helmet around that part of the microphone meant that it had some grip to the wig cap and it was sticking to the wig cap instead of that person's hair or hurting their scalp, but still maintained the stability and the security that we wanted for the mic position. I have seen a lot of photos of productions where people have just stuck two microphones together and called it a day, and yes, that works. Yes, that is within some people's budgets and the reality of some people's show schedules, but if I have the time, I like to take as much pride in my work as possible, not only because it is my work and I am proud of it, but also because this is something that has to be worn on someone's face, and I want them to feel like attention and love and care has been put into it as well. If you are somebody who makes microphones or has done this kind of work before and you have some tips, please leave them below. If you have any questions, please leave them below and we will make sure to answer them. If you want to have a more lengthy chat about it with other people, head on over to the Discord and we can all have a chat there. Make sure you stick around next week because I will be doing a video on how to put a microphone on somebody, including transmitters under a wig pack, hairline microphones on wig caps and onto people's natural hair. Also, every Monday night I stream on Twitch and we watch these videos together and can have more of an open discussion about what's going on. So make sure you head on over to the Twitch and give it a watch on a Monday night after the videos go live Australian Eastern Standard Time. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you there.